After divorcing her husband, a nurse named Jess is trying to get her life back on track. Their marriage was tainted by years of drug abuse on her side and constant cheating on his. After the breakup, Jess moves into an old country house that belonged to her late aunt. She's determined to start a new life and reconnect with her kids, Tyler and Owen. One day, Owen's dog runs away into the woods. When the dog comes back, he's acting aggressive. He bites the boy, and while the wounds eventually heal up, Owen inexplicably stays weak despite all the treatment he gets in the hospital. The only way for him to feel good is human blood. The director and scriptwriter Brad Anderson entered the American movie scene in the late 90s. Almost immediately, he got into the spotlight with his indie melodramas Next Stop Wonderland and Happy Accidents. Following his first success, Anderson's creative path suddenly took a different direction. His thrillers Session 9 and The Machinist revealed his talent in building suspense and nerve-wracking atmosphere. But then things went strange. While Anderson directed a number of successful TV shows like The Wire, Fringe, The Shield, and Boardwalk Empire, his feature films were becoming more and more insipid. Anderson was losing his flair. Blood is yet another step down for the director, who once showed the promise of becoming a new David Fincher or John Carpenter. The film rests on a premise that is quite typical for the horror genre. What would you do if your loved one turned into a bloodthirsty monster? Aside from Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, this topic was also addressed by less celebrated artists. For example, in Return of the Living Dead 3, a young man tries to stop his girl from turning into a zombie. In The Horror Mom, a son takes care of his older mother who became a werewolf. We don't know what triggered Owen's transformation in blood, but that's hardly important. The main thing is that the boy needs blood, and his loving mother is ready to do anything to keep him well fed. Why didn't Jess get medical help for Owen until it was too late? This question is left hanging in the air. Instead of getting the situation under control, the woman keeps stealing blood from the hospital she's working in. She stubbornly refuses to admit that her son is not getting any better. Apparently, this is how the filmmakers wanted to show a strong maternal love that knows no bounds. But it rather looks like something else. On Jess's part, it was foolishness, fear or selfish desire to prove something, both to people around and, more importantly, to herself. In the first half of the movie, these things are not so apparent, mostly because of the tight plot that is pumped with tension like a wound spring. The narrative plays out in a dynamic and suspenseful way. Jess's destructive past is well detailed, which adds her character volume and weight. The film's lead Michelle Monaghan has grown into a capable dramatic actress. She's carrying the narrative on her shoulders, but as the movie rolls into its second half, even Monaghan proves to be powerless. Towards the end, blood suddenly loosens its grip, comes up to the surface, and starts swimming in circles. It doesn't take a genius to figure out where things are headed, so you're just sitting there and waiting for Anderson to proceed to the climax. When watching Blood, you can see that it was made by a person with a lot of experience making movies, scary movies in particular. Anderson knows how to create a creepy vibe, how to make your stomach turn in anticipation of something gruesome, or when to do some cheating with a screamer. But all this serves to nothing unless you have a compelling story to draw on. This is the film's weak spot. Blood is lacking in originality, sincerity, and depth.